Hello guys, uh, my name is Andy Craven Griffiths. I am a, a poet and playwright and I am the judge this year for Ilkley Literature Festival's Young People's Poetry Competition. So I'm making this video to tell you what the theme is for this year and also to give you some tips, uh, five writing tips, um, ways that you can give yourself a better chance of winning the competition this year. So first of all, the theme um, is nature and the natural world. Um, and my first two tips are about how, what choices you can make to make your poems stand out from others that are responding to the same prompt of nature or the natural world. Um, so the first one is what are you going to write about that is going to stand out from what other people are writing about? Um, the most obvious way to answer uh, or to respond to the prompt of nature or the natural world is to think of a thing from nature and describe it, whether that is um, a natural scene like mountains or, or an animal like a tiger or whatever else it might be. But that's just one option. That's what most people will think of as their first option. So perhaps think of some other options and see which one is most interesting. Uh, another way that you might approach it is that you will write about a relationship in nature or with nature. So, for instance, the uh, water cycle uh, or the way that bees and flowers uh, work together in, in nature. This is a thing called symbiosis, where two things mutually benefit each other. Um, or you might write about the food chain and the connection in the flow of energy in nature. Um, or you write, might write about uh, the ageing process and, and how this occurs, whether it's in humans or animals or whatever else. Tip number two is to think how can you make your poem stand out um, through the way that you write it. So how can you write your poem? We've talked about what you're going to write about, but how can you write about it that makes it stand out even further, that makes it even more surprising? Uh, for instance, is it going to be a personification poem or a poem told from the point of view of something that isn't human. It could be told from the point of view of the sun or a tree or a cat. Um, or is it going to be a poem that's based almost entirely in simile and metaphor, where every line is a simile and metaphor and that will make it stand out? Or is it that you're going to describe something happening in nature, but describe it happening backwards, which will make it stand out? Or is it going to be that it rhymes all the way through? Or is there some other way that you can make it stand out in terms of how you write your poem? Tip number three is to use some um, simile or metaphor in order to make your reader or audience see things in a new way or a different way. Um, you know, are you going to describe the trees as giant broccoli, for instance, or are you going to describe um, the sea as a rolling, undulating mirror for the sky, and so on and so on. Um, simile and metaphor are both different ways of comparing one thing and another. Uh, to give a couple of examples that I've heard people use, my nephew once saw a dragonfly and didn't know the word for dragonfly, so he had to compare it to something else. And he came in and told me and my brother, oh, I just saw a thing, it was like a, a tiny insect helicopter and immediately I could picture these dragonflies as little helicopters and that uh, for me is the heart of poetry is making someone see something that they already know in a new way or imagine something that they already know in a new way um, so you can use language like, like like this thing is like this other thing this thing is as something as this other thing uh, or you could say as though the dragonfly is flitting around as though someone had um, made tiny insect helicopters. Tip number four is to pay attention to specific details. We have a tendency sometimes when we write to write what our ideas are, but if we observe and look at the specific details and pay close attention to what we can actually see, what we can actually hear, smell, taste uh, and touch, then we can notice details that will make people more immersed in the poem. For instance, this is my cat Albert, 
Um, a lot of people, when they draw a cat or think of a cat, they'll think of whiskers just coming here. But actually, he's got whiskers here in his forehead, uh, much higher up than you'd imagine, and others much further back in his cheeks. So if I describe them, it shows a, an attention to detail that makes the reader pay that attention as well. Um, a good way of, of practicing this is look at your feet. If people draw feet, they tend to draw the toes all in a row. But your little toe actually is way further back on your foot than your big toe. So that's, that's about close attention to detail. Um, and tip number five is to think about where are you in the poem? What do you want to say with your poem? So think about opinions you have that you want to put in your poem. Uh, think about experiences you have that you want to put in your poem. Your real feelings about the thing you're talking about in your poem. Your job as a poet is not to describe something as though anyone could have described it. Your job is to give your experience and view of the thing uh, and to include that in the poem. Good luck. I look forward to reading your entries. Take care.